This is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. I'm going to be doing a personal reading today and this one is very similar to many of the stories that we hear about in the news happening all over the country. It involves the potential radicalization of people based on the news that they watch. And it comes from a person who I'm going to refer to as female. Female wrote to me quite a detailed letter about something that happened in her family. And she's asked for answers. I'm not sure whether I'm in a position to be able to uh, confirm the exact answers that she's looking for. I'm going to do my best, but I also have to be really mindful of not appearing to slander or defame an organization or individuals or anything like that. And because of the way that I'm introdu introducing this personal reading already, you can probably tell that it's going to be a little bit different to others that I've done in the past. Now, female has written to me. She wrote to me back in, uh, it was either March or April of this year. And I had always highlighted her uh, email as being one that I was going to read on. But for some reason, it didn't, um, the reading didn't take place until today. As it happens, it's taking place today. Let me read the letter and then we'll do the reading. So the letter from female goes as follows. Hello, Ellie. My parents are from a small town in Florida. My father owns his own business and my mother has worked for the same school for 40 years. Both are well known in the community. About 15 years ago, I noticed that my father was becoming hypervigilant in preparing for what I thought was natural disasters. They live in an area that experiences hurricanes every year. He was stocking up on non-perishable food supplies, first aid and emergency type devices, along with generators, batteries and, and all sorts of other things. What, what started to get me to notice is that he started collecting guns, ammunition and even bought a decommissioned two-ton army vehicle. My mum tried to play it off as a hobby. My parents used to be people who grew their own vegetables, made their own soaps and were the outdoorsy camping type. They never were hunters. When I was a child, they were progressive and believed in unity. When I noticed the above changes, my parents started watching Fox on a cycle all day, every day when they weren't at work. They had changed political parties. They went from being Democrats to full swing Republicans. They started to become reclusive never leaving the house except to work. They never had people over to their home anymore. My parents started to carry guns and do their weekend errands to the grocery store, the pet store, etc. Then they started to carry guns while they were gardening. They became increasingly paranoid. Once Donald Trump became pres president, they became more outspoken, especially towards myself because I was questioning their behavior. They became combative, angry and argumentative, which was not who they normally were. They claimed my kind was after them. We were after their rights and after their guns. This is why they were collecting as much as they could. I tried explaining to them that they're being lied to, but they treated me horribly. Unfortunately, I couldn't be around for this. I didn't want this around my children either. So I cut off the relationship. In around mid-2021, my father and my brother were having an argument. It escalated quickly. It resulted in my brother being shot four times by my father on my childhood home front porch. My father shot and killed my brother, his own son. Florida is a stand your ground state, which gives the homeowner the right to shoot someone on their property in self-defense. This is what my father claimed actually happened, but no one else witnessed this. My father was exonerated of murder. My parents were known in the community, but the community was not aware of what my parents were like at home. Despite losing her son, my, fa my mother is standing by my father. I would think, though, after all she she'd seen, she'd wake up, but no, she's doubled down. The incident has ripped our family apart. Along with me, there are others in our family that feel that my dad has been waiting for the time when he can use his guns. Metaphorically, he's always had his finger on the trigger. Along with the increasing distrust in the world around him and his fears, I would like to know if years of watching Fox News 
and hearing Republican talking points were the catalyst of my father's increasingly bizarre behaviour. Um, is this indeed the reason he lost his cool and shot my brother? Also, was my dad's life really threatened by my brother so much that he had no choice but to shoot and kill him? He of course claims that he did. But my brother is not here to tell his side of the story. My brother has some, did have some issues in his life, but he was never the violent type. Now, female provided more information, which I didn't think was necessary to read out for the reading. A lot of it was very specific and would have helped uh, her family or herself to be identified. So I took all of that out. There was also far more information about exactly where in Florida um, they live. And she even did state that she was happy for me to mention the names of her families, but I've decided not to. I don't want the channel to become something that can be um, interpreted to be slanderous towards individuals. And I also don't want to make assumptions about whether a particular news media organization radicalized um, female's father. So I'm going to, regardless of what appears in the card, steer clear of stating that because I have to, for my own protection, not appear to be slandering or defaming individuals or corporations. I think we know that the penalty for that can be um, exorbitant. I also don't feel that the channel is an appropriate one in which to name and shame individuals or to get into the personal weeds of things. And so I'm going to stay away from that as well. However, what I would like to do is I would like to provide a reading for female that helps to perhaps close some of the gaps of understanding of what may have taken place according to the cards and also see if there is a clue as to how to move forward or learning points or something that can actually be provided from the cards. So um, let's begin. I am um, this is going to be a full reading and let's just see. I think uh, given that um, female's father has been exonerated, I don't know whether he went through a court process because, you know, the word exoneration could be, you know, by a jury or by a judge, or it could just mean that there were never any charges made against him. I don't know. And so I also don't want to be second guessing the legal system as well. But I'm going to do my best to be able to provide the best messages that I can based on what I see in the cards. So just to summarize, um, females, mother and father, live in a relatively rural community, so a small town area in Florida. They were known to be progressive in their viewpoint and Democrat in their vote, voting. And they did things like um, they grew their own vegetables, they made their own soaps. They were gentle people. But then they started watching um, Fox News and had it on all the time when they weren't working in the background. And there was a sense that they may have sort of become radicalized by that. They became very reclusive and paranoid. They're well known in their community, but the community does not know them as well as they think because they don't really come to their home. They don't know what they're like. They stopped inviting people over. They're just recognizable in the community, perhaps, and maybe they participate in some communicating things. Um, female's father in particular started getting an obsession with storing up for tough times or something or natural disasters, which there are a lot in the area in Florida, but also then started hoarding and collecting weaponry, including defensive weaponry like a tank. Almost as though he was preparing for war. It appears that the behavior of the mother and father have also changed. They became combative, argumentative, <clears throat> and were pointing the finger, including female and others, as being part of some group that were out to get them, in a way. So they had a sense of feeling victimized. There was a moment in 2021 
Now this is prior to January 6th, so no, it was after January 6th. Okay, so in the middle of 2021, there was an altercation between <clears throat> female's brother and her father. And during that altercation, the father shot and killed his son. And as heartbreaking as that might be, his wife has stood by him, and not only that, but she's sort of doubled down in her behavior. It sounds like maybe they both have doubled down in their behavior. So let's just see what kind of answers the cards can provide. Um, I'm going to be trying to look at this from the perspective of the family. But a certain individual might come out in the reading. And if I identify that, I'll let you know who it is. Okay. <clears throat> so we have the signifier. And the challenge card. Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts. The past. And then it could be because of in light of the kind of reading this is, this could, this could be the short term future, but it could also be a pinnacle or pivotal moment in time or something significant in the history of this. So the signifier is the Four of Wands, and it's challenged by the Page of Swords in reverse. The Four of Wands is about community celebration. It's about domestic comfort. It can be about a wedding, and it's about a job well done. The Page of Swords in reverse is about um, malicious gossip, gossip and slander. It can also be about a personality disorder and a difficult childhood. As soon as I put these cards down, I started to think about the, the division within the United States based on the different factions and the information that they're receiving, um, depending on what they ascribe to and where they go looking for information. Here we have this cohesive community element. This is about celebrating each other's successes, um, living in a, a domestic um, bliss amongst yourselves, whether it be, you know, husband and wife or whether it be within the community. There's an element of trust and celebration here. It's about togetherness in a way and building a foundation. Well, actually, no, in reverse, I don't want to use the wrong terminology because there are definitions that actually appear in the cards in reverse and it's not, it's upright. And so it's not really about building a foundation, but there are fundamental foundational principles that ascribe to a positive, cohesive community. And that's what appears here. There's an element of trust here. And there's an element of sharing, sharing the good times and celebrating each other and the community as a whole. However, it has a challenge. And the challenge is malicious slander and gossip in the first instance. Now, malicious slander and gossip is when you are lying about something or someone and it's malicious because it hurts and it cuts and it creates a division it, it alters the perceptions that people have of whatever it is that you're talking about there's also personality disorder which could indicate an underlying element within the fabric of whoever's listening and that could be a challenge as well someone who is has a fundamental disorder within them that just needs to be fed in order for it to kind of overwhelm them. And then the difficult childhood, I don't know, you know, we all have difficult childhoods in one way or another. So I think that, you know, the frailties that appear because each family is imperfect uh, by definition, but they tend to do their best as much as they can within the parameters of what they know and, and, and other things. Because there are things that get in the way, like alcoholism or drugs or, or an abusive past or misconceptions or, or relationship discord. And there's all sorts of things. Uh, politics can get in the way as well. What this baseline looks like is it looks like there was a seed potentially of something within a person. 
maybe the father, I don't know yet, maybe the parents, maybe the family, that had an element of disorder that was simmering at a very low level. But compounded on top of that, we have this massive, massively uh, fracturous and, and dangerous and harmful thing, which is the slander and defamation. This is the false information that people hear and it attaches to whatever weakness they have and overcomes them. And that is the challenge that sits against this community cohesion or this cohesion of a, of a happy family. And so I think the cards are definitely listening. We have our baseline. We have here an element of feeling as though we are part of a community, whether that be the family community or the wider community of even America or, or the local community. But there's something standing in the way of that. And it's a combination of bad information that's hurtful against and hurtful and deceitful and inaccurate because it's slander and defamation that is inaccurate information. If it was accurate information, it wouldn't be slanderous and it wouldn't be defamatory. It would be true. It would be facts. And also a fundamental weakness that sits beneath that, that probably was susceptible to it. Okay. So let's keep going. On the day to day, we've, we've got here in the subconscious, the eight of swords in reverse. Now I can see that it sits here next to the nine of swords. So I'm going to be looking at these cards, keeping in mind that they speak a language together. They're consecutive. One is, one is a, a con consideration of and um, an expansion of the other. This card is all about a sense of feeling trapped. Often you're self-entrapped, but it doesn't have to be for this reading because it didn't appear upright. There's blindfolding, there's you're being bound, you've got your cage of uh, swords around you, and you're standing there in what looks like an apocalyptic kind of wasteland. Generally, when this card is upright, the person has a sense of victimhood that they may have brought on themselves. However, this is not the case because the card did not appear upright. It appeared in reverse. And so I don't have to think of it in terms of victimhood, but what I can see is this sense of being trapped in the reality of something that feel, makes you feel as though you're in a cage. And there's this exploration of how to get out of it, the exploring of possibilities, of ways to be able to change your way of thinking or change your future or change your consideration of what's happened or just find a positive way forward out of this sensation. This is really telling about the motivation for writing to me. And that appears on the day to day. In the subconscious here, we've got a very closely related card, which is the nine of swords. And this is about worry and negative thoughts and deep, deep concern. It can include things like sleepless nights, um, staying up all night worrying. You can see it from this card. I actually think that both of these cards were put here together with the knowledge that I was going to have to tread really carefully when it came to this reading. And I believe that the day-to-day -day thoughts may be the day-to-day -day thoughts that actually were the underlying thoughts that activated females email to me. There's a deep concern about the fracturing, the fact that the family unit has been destroyed by the circumstance. And this looks like an exploration of what can be done to maybe lessen the blow or find some healing, find another, find something else that actually can change the course of, of the future with regards to the family. Some way to, to stop it from being identified from that by that moment alone, because that would be a very defining moment for the family. And so the, it's almost like exploring for exploring for possibilities of how to redefine the future based on and including what's happened in the past. And there's a lot of concern here, a lot of worry and a lot of negative thoughts about what could have happened, what did happen and the impact that it's going to have on individuals, what could have been prevented or avoided or, you know, am I to blame for any of this? And, you know, was someone else to blame for any of this? So just a lot of worry. Okay. 
In the past, we've got the Queen of Wands. Those of you who've been watching me for a long time probably immediately made a connection between this card in the past and this challenge. And if you did, then you're right. The Queen of Wands is about infections, fever, rivalry, promiscuity. Um, and, and this is a lot of traits that make a person um, vulnerable to this to being chased by this um, rancid kind of infection that can infiltrate their thinking. Now, the one suite is about inspiration and action. And, you know, your inspiration relates to uh, um, sort of, it's not about how you feel. It's a little bit about how you think. So it's kind of, it can actually warp your sense of what is, which is then what inspires you to be who you are and to act in the way that you do. If it's infected and builds into a fever, could it have been because of slander? But also, could it have been because of a small seed that was vulnerable? You know, they say this, this concept, concept of is a person the way that they are based on nature or nurture? Were they born that way? Or was it their environment that made them that way? We are probably all born with a seed of fragility that could cause us to go in a really negative direction. If we are landed into the, if, if we land in the right circumstances where everything appears that can turn us into negative people who do negative things. If we're plonked into a situation where we have all of the support and positivity that we need and we're healing, we're hearing healthy messages and digesting healthy thoughts, then perhaps we will continue to grow and develop into healthy people. It looks to me as though what this reading is saying is that there was something infectious, infectious that infiltrated a family that had a small seed perhaps of something that was susceptible to that and so I tend to believe because this is a communication card and this is an inspiration card what this is telling me so far is that in the past leading up to the incident that female discusses about her father and her brother the father became sus um, susceptible to the infectious influence of negative communication, which was untrue. And it may have come from, I know that he listened to Fox News a lot, but I don't think that I can say that it was Fox News. What I'm saying is that I think that it was, he was digesting maybe selectively. Maybe he was only listening to the things that he wanted to hear and they could have come from anywhere, but they were slanderous and they infected his mindset and inspired him to become more and more aggressive and combative and belligerent and untrusting of everything around him and suspicious and paranoid. And that's what this looks like. And jealous of a jealous of a of an of a competitor who doesn't exist in a way. OK, <clears throat> so this next card, um, it could be the short term or it could be this pivotal moment in time. It's the Four of Swords. It's about withdrawal, um, taking a time out, resting the mind and meditation. Let's just see what the rest of the reading says. The way they see themselves. Yeah, OK. The way others see them or the environment in which they sit. Hopes and fears. And then the final answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the way they see themselves is the two of one, uh, two of cups in reverse. Now, it's literally the opposite of what it is upright. This is about attraction, commitment and love. This is the bringing together of like minded or like hearted kind of people. And that would be the building of a strong, cohesive community. 
Instead, we have this disconnect. And so I think that what's happened here is the family is fractured. You've got the father and the mother who are certainly fractured. And then you have members, but not all of the family. You've got female who sits on one side and the parents who sit on the other. There's a, a, a brother or son who has now been lost. And then you have various members of the family that are either on one side or the other. That's what this is. That's where the, the two hearts are no longer united. They're kind of split. And that is the sense of feeling trapped that we kind of want to get out of. And that's probably the reason why female wrote to me in the first place. So that's the way that they're viewed. I think that there's a little bit of everything in here. I think we have a little bit of how the family is presented in this reading, but also female herself, because she's the one who initiated the contact. The way that they're viewed by others or the environment in which they sit is the Knight of Swords. And this corresponds with the letter that I received. This is a, a sort of an incisive, decisive fighter who fights for their ideology. Now, you know, when your parents say to you that you are, how, how was it put? Let me just have a look here. That um, they became combative, angry and argumentative. And they claimed that her kind were after them. That her kind were after their rights and after their guns. And that was because she was saying to them, or she was questioning their behavior, which was the hoarding of guns and the listening to this angry rhetoric all the time that was warping their sense of what's real. This is the angry rhetoric, accusatory rhetoric. And this is the warping of their sense of what's right and what's wrong. See, the way that she is viewed or she was viewed well, actually, her parents are still around. So the way that she is viewed was that she, the combat, she was the one being competitive. She was the one who was combative. She was the one who was out to get them. People like her were trying to take away their rights, were trying to take away their guns. On principle, they were hoarding more and more. And on principle, she was saying that what she believes is that they're being lied to. This is the environment of combat between the two sides. And this is the perception that appears for both sides. I'm not saying that both sides are right or wrong, but there's an ideology there. And this knight fights on the basis of what his ideology is. But your ideology can be healthy based on reality, or it can be unhealthy based on lies or a distortion of reality so i think what we have here is we have the cards listening and i'll see if i can get more out of it as i continue so in here we have hopes and fears and this is the five of pentacles the five of pentacles is all all about destitution and loss and poverty and it can be um in terms of material wealth or prosperity but also in terms of well-being. Now, you see, having a fear of the destitution and loss of well-being sits directly beneath this infection of the past. And I believe that what motivated female to write to me, even though it's not expressly stated in her email, was that this has left a a damaged legacy and something that's not only hurtful but potentially damaging for future generations including her own children perhaps but also other people that she loves but even for the well-being and mindset of her own parents and for herself and for her family unit being her and her partner and her children and cousins and f other relatives and <clears throat> and those that she cares about that that there's a loss of well-being for everyone associated with this incident. Anyone who's part of the circle of what is supposed to be love and community that appears here. That there's been a fracturing. And that it's actually going to reverberate 
into future generations and harm lots of people either because there's been a distortion or because they've had to leave their family behind and they're lonely they they don't have the family unit that they thought they were going to have so i think that this is a fear card in the final outcome here i have a really interesting card which is the magician and the magician is about having the tools and resources the power and confidence to be able to manifest your desires and it sits beneath this card of sort of taking a moment and pausing. I think that this is a, a difficult reading to, to deliver because I'm kind of answering a question that wasn't asked. And the question is um, that I'm answering really is how to move forward from this. I understand that this is a heavy weight that would be hanging off the neck of your family. A family is supposed to be all about unity. You can have your disagreements, you can even have your fights. But it's not okay for one family member to kill the other. It's also not okay for there to be an outside influence that taps into the vulnerabilities that appear in every family and scratches at them until they fester. This is the festering, and this is the information, the slander and the defamation, the really harsh, awful, dangerous rhetoric that's out there. What these cards are saying specifically, and I know the question was, you know, asking, I don't even know if I put it in the letter, I may have taken it out, Right. The questions were, um, I would like to know if those years of listening to Fox News and Republican talking points were the catalyst in my father's increasingly bizarre behavior. And is that the reason why he lost his cool and shot my brother? But also, was his life really threatened by my brother so much that he had no choice but to shoot and kill him? That's because that's what he claims he did. The cards haven't said anything about your father being threatened. I can't say that he wasn't. But I will say that I can't see any evidence in the cards of that. Instead, what I've given you is the definitions of the cards as they were laid down. And what the cards seem to indicate is that it was a an infiltration of something that acted like an infection that inspired something negative in terms of inspiration and action. And it arose from information and intellect because that's what these cards represent. So I, I do believe, for example, Everyone who's been watching my channel will know that I'm a bit of a news junkie, in particular when it comes to US politics, because that's the thing that brought me onto this channel in the first place. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be here. I started to have these really prolific dreams about weird, weirdly, people in the United States I'd never met that were involved in US politics. And so that's what brought me onto YouTube in the first place was to get answers. And instead, well, I kind of have received my answers, but... I kind of somehow fell into this content creator kind of role as a result of that. So I do like my news and I do stay very much up to date on US politics. And I often listen to it and I think to myself, gosh, I can see where the influences are, are coming on both sides. It's a non-stop push to believe a certain thing. And this is across the board. People who are listening, if you ascribe to a particular series of channels or news sources or media entities consistently, and you're always listening to the same stuff, then you're going to believe that's the reality. And it doesn't matter what you're listening to. If it has a certain ideology, you'll end up kind of being, it'll infiltrate your life and, and turn it into your reality. 
And I actually am mindful when I listen from time to time. I do a little check to see whether or not I'm still, you know, sort of, I'm not sitting on the fence. I, I do have my views, but I do know that I have a healthy emotional distance from what I'm, to what I'm listening to. There's a lack of emotional distance in this reading. Instead, what's happened is the reading is saying that predominantly, although there may have been a seed of some kind of dysfunction that appeared either in a certain family member who I'm assuming is the father, but it could even be the family dynamic because the family appears in this card, there may have been a seed of something that was infirm. And that's the case for all families. So I wouldn't take that personally just relating to yours. But if you hit the right wound at the right time, you can do some damage. And this damage was done by the information that was received. So yes, I think that I don't, I don't want to say that it was Fox or any other single entity. But what I will say is that they were being fed a load of very damaging information from somewhere and probably numerous places and collectively it has infiltrated their thinking. What should have been was a happy, cohesive family. But that is not the case. So what we have here, something else far more unhealthy appeared. And what actually happened was this extreme ideology that led to a combative, paranoid type of existence. But also, it created a real divide. But this divide, I think, became more profound when the death of female's um, brother took place. The divide was there and it was all about the fight. The incident occurred and it's created a division that I think sits at the heart of the identity of the family. There's a lot of worry and concern. And I think the worry and concern is about the family becoming one that is almost in poverty in terms of its well-being. And I think that what motivated writing to me was a desire by female to be able to explore something else that will perhaps help to renew the health, at least for her and her children. But what the message of the cards is, appears here. We've got here the short term and then we have the final answer. And I think the short term is this meditation and withdrawal and taking a time out. And I think that this is about clearing your thoughts. Intellect and communication appears here in the sword suite. And what this person is doing is they are actively withdrawing from whatever sits behind that stained glass window. Now, all the color in that stained glass window can relate to joyous, happy community spirit that appears in all that color because there are actually depictions there of lots of people. But it can also, if you look at the mosaic of it, it can also appear as a kind of a confusion. And so this is about actively considering your own position and welfare and the welfare of you and your children and your immediate family moving forward. This is about moving forward this card and this is in your day to day and the only way to move forward is to accept the past as the past and to recognize that we have to sometimes be in a position where we cannot hold on to what happened in the past regardless of how traumatic and hurtful it is and no matter who it is we have to leave behind if that is the case what this is saying is in the short term to stop and heal yourself to withdraw from the sickness that appears in the past and to withdraw it from your mind and to focus on positive things for you and your family. This could be planning positive things. It may even be relocating. It could be anything. But what it is, it's a withdrawal in the short term. And then in time, what the cards are saying is that you can use your new found strength from having taken the time to heal yourself intellectually to be able to manifest any future that you want. You don't have to have this 
family episode. Remain as the defining episode that defines the family. You can manifest any definition for your family that you desire because you have the power to do that. In order to gain the, you have the tools and resources and the power to do that. And in order to gain the confidence, you need to heal your thoughts on what happened in the past. And the best way to do that is it's going to sound very, very difficult. But the best way to do that is to forgive and move on. You don't have to forget. But in order to move forward, you do have to forgive. You don't have to return to the family, but you do have to forgive. And you have to forgive here and you have to forgive here. And once you've done that, then everything you need to manifest your future appears in this card. It's just really up to you. So, in summary, this was a difficult reading to do. The cards were kind to me <laughs> because I think that if, given that we know what um, females' questions were, the cards could have, they never would because they the cards never create, they, they never inflame the situation. Anyone who's been watching for a long time will be able to see that even if you look at the cards, you don't have to listen to what I'm saying. You, once you understand the defini of definition of the cards, you can see the cards will never inflame the situation. They will always provide a sensible, healthy, positive move forward from whatever position that you're in. They will give you the risks of where you may fail. For example, this infection of a negative um, inspiration from slander and being worried and concerned and feeling trapped by your family circumstances. These are all things that if you dwell on them, they're unhealthy. The cards have provided that warning. But what the cards have also said is that you have everything in you to be able to extricate yourself from that definition and create a different definition for yourself and your family based on something entirely good that's really positive, that's well within your reach. The only thing that has to change is the way that you think about who you are and what your prospects are. And a lot of that has to do with forgiving what has happened, not necessarily forming the relationships again, not necessarily returning back. That's something that only you can know what's right and what's right for you and for your family. But to be able to, in your head and in your heart, let it go. And when you let it go, then your world will open up into anything that you want it to be and you can redefine your future. And that's the message from the cards. Thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams.